So Mrs. Glover, Cathy will come to see you. You're not playing ball, mate. There she is. Come on, Mrs. Glover. Mrs. Glover. Come on, you can see her. Come on, you can see her. Come on, you can see her. Come on, you We're just doing our job, mate. On the contrary, you're wasting your time. Mrs. Glover has stated quite clear that she doesn't want to talk to any of you lot. Now, why don't you save yourselves a morning and the cold and clear off, eh? Come on, come on, please. Come on. Come on. Thanks very much indeed. Come on. Are you deaf or stupid? Oh. Look, cards on the table, pal. If I was Cathy, I wouldn't bother with the local rags either. But I can offer her a bit more. <sighs> I thought you were the courier. Technically, yeah. But I've managed to place quite a few articles at Nationals now, and I know there'll be plenty of interest in this. Not from Cathy. It might be just what she needs to get over it. Putting her feelings down on paper, sharing experiences. Oh, yeah? <laughs> a sort of therapy? Yeah, if you like. Look, I'm just trying to help her. I can see what sort of experience the tabloids are looking for. My night of terror with Psycho Killer. No, thank you. There'd be a few quid in it for all of us. What's going on? I've tried to get rid of them, but they won't leave. Do you want me to persuade them? No, I don't think that'll be necessary, Terry. Most of you know me. If you don't, it's time you learnt. I'm Chris Tate. I run Tate Haulage. Tate Transport and a number of other companies. You were married to Mrs Glover once, weren't you? <sighs> yes, I was. And we're still good friends, so I don't want to bother by scum like you. You can't talk to us like that. Wrong. It's advertising from Tate companies that keep your pathetic little rags in business. If I phone your editor, you're out of a job. So why don't you all do yourselves a favour, clear off before that happens. Nice one, boss. Yeah, Thanks, Chris. I thought they'd be camped out there all day. Let me know if they give you any more trouble. Came to see how you were. You needed some company. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd be glad to talk to someone who isn't after an exclusive. Known a few blokes on the lorries turn nasty, but you can usually see it coming. Graham didn't seem that sort at all. He had everybody fooled. Just makes me feel worse. I knew what you were up to. Then why didn't you tell someone? I didn't think anybody would believe me, especially when I found out it was Eric Pollard who got suspicious. You're probably right. Graham seemed a lot more trustworthy than Eric ever could. He tried telling the police, but Angie wouldn't listen to him. Look, you both did more than the rest of us. It weren't enough. So, we'll have to try and help her get over it instead. Look, I was going to pop over there this afternoon. Why don't we take one of your specials with us? I'm sure she doesn't feel much up to cooking at the moment. Hmm? So, where's your boss today? Cathy? Haven't you heard? No, I've been away for a few days. Oh, it was awful. She was nearly killed. Graham Clark, the teacher. I remember him. Wasn't he the guy who was involved in some accident with a local girl? Rachel, yeah. Only they don't think it was an accident now, and he might have killed his wife and all. Oh, that's terrible. You two knew him quite well, yeah? I bet he could tell me a few stories. You do realise this low life as a reporter, and therefore anything you say he will turn into a lurid story? Is that true? I'm just trying to earn a living. Right, well, you're not having these now, then. Go on, clear off the pair of you. We don't serve your sort in here. You could have told us before. Perhaps. But I got used to people not trusting my word. If Sergeant Reynolds had listened to me when I told her that Clark was a murderer, none of this would have happened. Yeah, well, well, you was right that time. Huh. Remember that in future. I mean, well, it would be a terrible shame to put this to waste. <laughs> Thank you. It's all happening down in the village. There's reporters camped outside Cathy's cottage. Everybody's talking about it. Well, that's how it is in Emmerdale. Place runs on gossip. Cathy could have been killed. People are bound to be concerned about it. Well, I'm not complaining. If they're gossiping about her, maybe they'll leave me alone for a change. Well, I don't know. It must be nice to be the centre of attention sometimes. You may not have noticed, but you are. 
People have got plenty to say about you two living up here together. Well, it's not exactly the eye life, is it? With Zoe's nose stuck in pages of figures all the time. I shall be finished with these accounts in a minute and then we can spend the rest of the day together. What were you planning? Whatever you like, we will talk about it. Will you be staying in all day? Well, I don't know. Why? You trying to get rid of me? No, of course not. I thought it might just do you good to get out a bit more, cheer you up. It's OK. I can take a hint. I'll go and have a nice long soak in the bath, give you two lovebirds a chance to talk. She's a right laugh, that girl, isn't she? In small doses, perhaps, but it's starting to wear a bit thin. You're dead ratty today, is it? Cos you're missing Chris. No, it isn't. His moving out was the best thing for all of us. I shall just be glad when we get the house completely to ourselves. Hmm. Thanks for getting rid of those reporters. All part of the service. We're always lucky. He slipped out to the garage early before they got here. How's he doing? Well, he's trying to be supportive, but he's got troubles of his own right now with Kelly. He doesn't know where they're going. Oh, I don't think either of them do. You've certainly done all that you can to help them sort it out. Well, I'm just about all the family he's got left now. I heard you'd been helping Emily, too. I mean, isn't it time you stop worrying about other people and put yourself first? Yeah. Yeah, that's roughly what Graham said when he invited me for a quiet weekend away from it all. You don't have much luck, do you? Maybe I just never learned my lesson. I'd made up my mind it was going to be different this time. I wasn't going to get involved. I was just going to enjoy myself for a while. No, you couldn't have known about him. He fooled everyone, including me. I should have known, Chris. I always pick the wrong men. Ah, present company accepted, I hope. Well, maybe we should never have got married. We've gotten so much better since the divorce. I guess that's my fault. Maybe we were always meant to be just friends. I'm really grateful for your friendship, Chris, and the way you helped me through the accident. It means a lot to know you're always there to help. You know, I'd do anything for you. All you've got to do is ask. Yeah, thanks. I know. But I don't know what I want right now or where I'm going. I guess I'm just grateful to be alive. You're not really glad Chris is gone, are you? You should be. Didn't exactly make you feel welcome here. I got over that. We were starting to get on much better. Hmm. Only when he thought he could use you to get at me. Don't flatter yourself. I'm a person too. I think he was really getting to quite like me. You really don't know Chris at all. He just can't help being devious. It's in his blood. Then it must be in yours too. We are nothing like each other. Still your brother. I think you should give him a call, ask him to come on. Absolutely not. If anyone should be apologising, it's him. He behaved really childishly. Well, I think you're being childish, not admitting you miss him. I really don't want to discuss Chris anymore. I'd far rather talk about us. Oh, spare me that. Where are you going? Down the village. Shall I come with you? No, thanks. I can handle some things much better by myself. So you've moved out of home farm permanently? No, oh, no, I don't know. We all certainly needed some breathing space. Maybe I'm just not very good at living with anybody. Something I thought a lot about when I was trapped in the cellar. I thought I was never going to get out. So I thought I'd never get another chance. But I realised that you've got to learn to live with yourself before you can live with anyone else. Maybe that's a lesson I've got to learn too. All my relationships seem to end in disaster. Well, you can't blame yourself for Graham. He was crazy. What about the other men in my life? Biff, Dave, you? Oh, I suppose we all let you down one way or another. Maybe there was no way you could have lived up to my expectations. There is nothing wrong with wanting the best, Cathy. If anyone deserves it, it's you. Yeah, well, I seem to settle it. Is Chris around? I couldn't get any answer from his place. Oh, it's still at Cathy's. Uh, I'd leave him for a while. Mind, uh, Cathy could do with all the uh, support she can get. Wouldn't have thought he'd be too good on tea and sympathy. Oh, he and Cathy go back a long way. Seem to look out for each other. But if you've got time to kill, you might as well get me another pint. Yeah. Well, I thought you'd be keeping your head down. Comes to summit when Eric Pollard makes a better detective than the local force. Give us a break, <laughs> Terry. I've been getting stick off everyone in the village. It's my lunch hour and I've just come in for a drink and a sarnie. 
Your usual. I'll get Marlon to bring your sandwich out in a minute. Thanks, Bernice. I warned you about Graham Clark, didn't I? But you wouldn't listen. It's as well things turned out the way they did. Otherwise, you might have been responsible for Cathy's death. Can I get anyone a drink? No one wants to drink with you, Paul. We don't want Cathy bothered, and we don't want to talk to thee about it. Yeah, so why don't you clear off before we throw you out? I'm just doing my job, mate. You can't threaten me. You're supposed to be a policewoman. Tell him. I'm off duty. Well, then you tell him that you don't want any violence in your bar. I'm just going to get some more splits up. Right. You've had your warning. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> up to cooking, but you need to eat to keep your strength up. Well, it looks wonderful. Everyone's been so kind to me. Yeah, well, uh, it's the least I can do. <clears throat> I, I don't know how to apologise for letting you down. Marlon, you didn't let me down. Me and Eric, we knew what Graham was. We, we just couldn't find a way of making anyone believe us, you know? Well, he'll never hurt anyone else again. I was the lucky one. It's Rachel we should all feel sorry for. Amen to that. Hmm, well, perhaps we can all start to forget about him now. Terry threw that reporter out the woolly, so hopefully he won't be bothering you anymore. Yeah, so enjoy your meal in peace. <sighs> yeah, hiya, listen, it's Darren Pierce. Look, nobody's saying a word here, everyone's keeping stung. Ended up getting a right lecture off the rents because I didn't tell them about Mr. Clark scaring me. Weren't they worried? Oh, yeah. Um, I couldn't help overhearing you young ladies might have some information about Graham Clark. My mum doesn't let me speak to strange men. Come on, Ollie. No, I think the public have got a right to know the whole truth. Um, but let's not talk here. Let me live up the road. I thought you'd be at work. I didn't feel up to it today. Well, where's Joseph? He's staying over at his friend's house, remember? That's OK, isn't it? Might be for the best. Still haven't worked out whether I should say anything to him about Graham. I'd have thought he'd be too young to understand. Maybe. But the man killed his mother. There's always a chance that someone might say something to him about it at school. I don't want him any more upset. You should talk to his teachers first. But in the end, it's my responsibility. It's times like this I realise it's going to be hard being a mother and father to him. You can always talk things over with me. I don't feel like visitors. Don't worry. I'll get rid of them. Come to see Chris. Sorry, he's too busy for visitors right now. It's OK. I will make an exception in Frankie's case. Thought you ought to know she's missing you. I was scared. I'm scared of going to school. So why don't you tell anyone? I was frightened no one would believe me. I started to notice a pattern. It was always worse when there was a full moon. Are you winding me up? He used to follow me on from school, pestering me. That's not true. You have got 30 seconds to get out of this house. I'm just doing... Now! You're going to get yourself in serious trouble one of these days, young lady. I knew you'd be home soon. I just wish I'd had the chance to tell him about Mr Clark, really being an alien from out of space. I won't have another drink, thanks, Chris. I'm off to the pub. OK. You'll have another one, won't you, Frankie? While well, you've got the chance. Zoe doesn't approve of heavy drinking. I'll, uh, leave you to it, then. Yeah. Well, see you later. Zoe doesn't really mean to be a killjoy. It's just that our father had a bit of an alcohol problem, so she's sensitive on the subject. I didn't know about that. I'm sure you can bring out the party animal in her. It's probably why it's a good thing I moved out. Give you two a lot more time together. I don't think you moved out because of me. Of course not. It's best for me and Zoe, too. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. Trust me, we are chalk and cheese. I mean, she's a much nicer person than I am. But I get fed up. I get fed up with endless discussions of what I've done wrong. I can understand that. I mean, I could be a bit of a naughty boy at times. I admit it. 
But the trouble with always trying to be a saint is you never have much fun. <laughs> I think you and I understand each other quite well. Nice place, Kel. I should use the tradesman's entrance. <laughs> Funny, when I worked up here, I used to think house like this was all I wanted. And the money to go with it, of course. <laughs> Not anymore. I just want things to be settled one way or another. Whatever happens, you're never coming home again, are you? Oh, it's not my home anymore. You're the only person I really care about there. I can't stay here for long either, especially now Chris is gone. So he's already getting fed up with me. What are you going to do? Oh, it's you two. I thought I had Frankie come back. Oh, I was just showing Donna around. It's OK, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Oh, and don't worry. Won't be getting in your ear tonight. I'm going to the pictures give you and Frankie a chance to have an evening alone. That's very considerate of you, Kelly. Um, I just wish I knew where she was. She didn't say anything to you, did she? No. Probably having a drink in the woolly back soon. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, better be going. See you later. All right, bye. bye. Oh, hello, Bernice. It's Zoe Tate. Um, I was just wondering if Frankie was in the bar. It was really good of you to come here, Frankie. Please, you feel free to visit any time things get too intense up at Anfar. I was hoping you'd come back with me. Oh, couldn't do that. Not unless she asked me. After all, it's, it's her house now. And she seems rather set against me. Yeah, but you're a brother and blood's thicker than mm. water. Not amongst the Tates, it seems. I suppose I shouldn't blame her. She's been in a bit of a funny mood ever since Liam died. I just can't blame you for that. Well, Zoe's always having a crisis of conscience about something. I mean, you'll get used to it. <laughs> Me, I just prefer to get on with my life without holding an inquest on every mistake I make. Best way to be. Maybe you can encourage her to lighten up a bit. Sure, it'll do her some good. Tell her not to worry about me. I'll be fine in my little cottage. So you settling in all right at Chris's cottage, then? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Just that I thought it might be a bit awkward for you after him bothering you like that. Oh no, no, that's all forgotten now. He was under a lot of pressure after the kidnap getting his business and his life back together again. I suppose so. I think he gets lonely sometimes. Yeah, well, he's been a bit chattier with me since it happened. Yeah, falling out with his sister won't help. He's going to need a few friendly faces around. Yeah, well, it's a good job he's got you and me then, eh? Still, it must be a bit crowded there, uh, after home farm. I reckon you'd uh, want to get out a bit more in the evenings. I hadn't really thought about it. I have. I'm often at a loose end myself after work. Uh, maybe we could go to a club or a pictures or, well, whatever you want. Uh, that's really sweet of you to think of me, Terry, but I get a bit tired after a day with Joseph. I just think I'll finish my drink and head home. Sleep well, Frankie. I'll send you back to Zoe in the morning. If she asks. Very nicely. <laughs> Hello, Pete. Hi, yeah, it's Zoe Tate. Yeah, look, um, I was wondering if Frankie was with you this evening. No, I've already tried the wall pack. No, it's OK. Um, I'm sure she'll turn up soon. OK, bye. Well, she looks out for the count. I told her she was knocking it back too quickly. But she wouldn't listen. You want me to call Zoe to come and collect her? I think we'd better let her sleep it off first. If Zoe turned up now, she's bound to blame me. Can't face another row. Starting to get you down. She's changed a lot lately. I don't know whether it's what she went through when I was kidnapped or the relationship with Frankie, but I never know how she's going to react these days. I mean, she never used to be interested in the business. 
Now she thinks she can run it without me. She said she bought Home Farm back for me, and then she made it impossible for me to live her. I'm sure she never wanted you to move out. I hope you're right. I just know how disappointed Dad would be if he could see us like this. He built the business up for us. Same as I'm trying to do for Joseph. You really love that boy, don't you? He means everything to me. That's why I worry about the business. I have to be sure that he'll be all right if anything ever happens to me. You worry too much. It's making you all tense. I can feel it in your shoulders. I can't help worrying. Even about Zoe. I hate to think of her all alone in that great big house. Answer that. No. Don't want you to stop. Feels too good. Whoever it is, you can leave a message on the answer phone. I'm sorry you got mixed up in a family feud. I realise it can't be easy for you. Stuck in this cottage with a sad man in a wheelchair. That's not how I think of you at all, Chris. Isn't it? I thought you only stayed because Zoe persuaded you to. Well, I didn't know you then. I do now. And if you are sad, then maybe I can help to make things better. I hope you know what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> <laughs> 